It's Michelle of Lab Muffin Beauty Science, Chemistry PhD, Cosmetic Chemist, and Sunscreen Connoisseur. Today we're doing an update of my sunscreen recommendations. I usually do more beauty science videos, hit the notification bell for those when they upload, but everyone asks me about product recommendations, so here they are. But first, a bunch of disclaimers, because I do not have the self-confidence to give my opinion without them. I am working on that. This list is obviously subjective. Everyone has different likes and dislikes, so don't assume that you'll just like all of these. It's a good idea to check out recommendations from people with similar skin to you because you'll probably like similar formulas. I have oily to normal skin, it's prone to clogged pores, especially with sunscreens, dehydration, and hyperpigmentation. If you're not sure about your skin type and conditions, the Lab Muffin Guide to Basic Skincare ebook can help you out. It also talks about how to choose and use products, including sunscreen. White cast is a problem with a lot of sunscreens. My skin tone is NC20. If your skin is dark, look at reviews from people with a similar skin tone to you to check that it won't show up. I like high UVA protection because of my hyperpigmentation, which is genetic. My dad is basically a giant mole. I have a video on UVA. I prefer products with newer filters because they usually feel lighter. I also like sunscreens that are formulated to sit nicely and not bunch up under makeup and make me look like I have face dandruff. Also, I'm Australian, but the vast majority of you watching this are not, so I'll be talking about products that are and aren't approved as proper therapeutic sunscreens in Australia. The ones that are will have a listing number. Also for Australian sunscreens, SPF 50 plus actually means above SPF 60. Things work differently here. We ride kangaroos in pairs because public transport. There was an emu war. Also, different sunscreens are formulated for different purposes. So for example, most popular Asian sunscreens are only meant for going to the office. So they might not hold up to dancing in the rain or eating a really spicy laksa. For moist activities, you probably want to look for a water-resistant sunscreen instead. It's also good to avoid roasting in the sun, even with sunscreen on, and to layer your protection. Use sun protective clothing, hats, and sunglasses. Even if you try really hard, you're probably not getting a perfect layer of sunscreen. So if you have a few other types of protection, you'll probably still get good protection overall. Your Swiss cheese holes are unlikely to line up. And for all of these, you'll want to be applying around a quarter teaspoon for your face, half a teaspoon for face, neck, and ears. Check out my sunscreen questions video for more about how to use sunscreen. All of these products were given to me as PR samples or as part of a sponsorship, but 95% of the sunscreens I've been given haven't made it onto this list, so I do have standards. All right, let's f up some sunscreens. Okay, so for legal reasons, I have to say this is a joke. Do not drink your sunscreens. Follow the instructions like a normal human being. The La Roche-Posay and Helios Invisible Fluid Facial Sunscreen. This is also commonly called the Shaka Fluid. This is my partner's favorite sunscreen. This one it meets all the marks of my favorite sunscreen because uh, it's nice and thin. Nice screw top here. I'm not like, afraid of it exploding my backpack. This, this is the goods. This is a very lightweight, non-greasy sunscreen designed for sensitive skin, and it's pretty much invisible after you apply it. It's fragrance-free, absorbs easily into skin, doesn't clog pores, and sits nicely under makeup. It's just a comfortable daily sunscreen. It's also formulated to not sting eyes, and that seems to be true for most people who have reviewed this. Eye sting seems to vary a lot though, and so far I don't think there's any real pattern with which ingredients sting or not. It changes a lot from person to person. The packaging is also really nice. The liquid texture in this packaging with the small drop opening also means there's less product wastage. Unless your partner decides to apply it to his back one day for no apparent reason because some of us are unable to function in polite society. There's a very similar looking product in the US, so be careful. Check the ingredients to make sure you're buying the Australian and European version with the newer filters. Biro UV Aqua Rich Watery Essence. This is the 2019 version, which as of right now is the newest version, sort of. There's a 2021 light up version with a white cast on purpose, which is actually a common thing with Asian sunscreens, so check which one you're buying. This one doesn't have a white cast and it's one of the most popular Asian sunscreens. The Watery Essence line is famous for having this really nice and light, fresh, non-sticky feeling on your face. 
It's designed to work as a foundation primer as well, although it can pill a little bit with some foundations. I'm guessing it's because it's water resistant. Water resistant sunscreens tend to pill a bit more because of the extra film forming ingredients that help them stay in place. This says it's 80 minutes water resistant. From what I can tell, there's no official water resistance standard in Japan, and there are a bunch of different standards around the world. So it's hard to work out exactly how water resistant it is after 80 minutes. But it is one of the lightest, least pilly, water-resistant sunscreens out there. Alcohol is quite high on the ingredients list, which generally isn't a problem because this has a lot of moisturizing ingredients as well to balance out any drying. Alcohol isn't necessarily bad in skincare. I have a video that goes through all the evidence on that, but some people can have issues with it. So if that's you, this might not be the best option. But a lot of people with sensitive skin do love this sunscreen. It also has a mild floral scent once the alcohol smell goes away. The biggest downside to this sunscreen and a lot of Japanese sunscreens in general is that they tend to reformulate them every couple of years, which makes it really confusing to work out which one you're buying and which one people are reviewing. But it's great from a technology point of view. This version was updated with encapsulated UV filters that they call the micro defense system. It helps the sunscreen form a more continuous film on skin. Beauty of Chosun Relief Sun Rice and Probiotics is a Korean sunscreen and it's currently the sunscreen I've been recommending the most. I know some people are a bit skeptical about Korean sunscreens, but this is manufactured by Colmar, who are widely recognized as the top Korean sunscreen producer. The SPF has been certified by two labs in two different countries, and it's actually approved as a sunscreen in Korea, which is not the case with all Korean sunscreens. So this is probably one of the most legit Korean sunscreens. It's really lightweight with a non-sticky moisturizing finish, similar to a light moisturizer, even if you apply lots of it. It doesn't clump up or get cakey under makeup. There's no white cast on light and medium skin, but I have seen it show up on darker skin. It has no fragrance and no alcohol if those are problems for your skin. The only issue is that this is designed to be lightweight and wash off easily, so if you're sweaty or moving around a lot, very vigorously eating a spicy laksa, this probably won't be as appropriate, but it's great as an everyday sunscreen, maybe for a mild laksa day. In terms of skincare ingredients, it has rice extracts, which are meant to be great for hydration and for sensitive skin. There's glycerin, which is also great for hydration. There's niacinamide and adenosine, which are brightening and anti-wrinkle ingredients used in a lot of Korean functional cosmetics. Isn't Tree Hyaluronic Acid Airy Sunstick is a new entry to my list. This really intrigued me because this is the sunscreen that Isn't Tree recommend for oily and combination skin. And to me, sticks have always been on the heavy side but I think I have to change my opinion. This is extremely light and non-sticky, it glides on super smoothly, and is designed to not clump up even over makeup. The stick has a droplet shape that's designed to make it easier to apply on the curves of your face, so next to your nose and around your eyes. Like the beauty of Chosun sunscreen, it's made by Colma and is properly approved in Korea. It also has niacinamide and adenosine and is approved as a brightening and anti-wrinkle functional cosmetic in Korea. It also has eight types of hyaluronic acid in it, which means there are lots of different molecular sizes, which can sink into skin at different depths and give more well-rounded hydration. There's also a bunch of antioxidants and ceramide. The biggest downside, this is very small, 22 grams, which is less than half the size of the Watery Sun Gel, which is another Isn't Tree sunscreen that's coming up in my recommendations, spoiler, but it's more expensive as well. It's also a bit tricky to be confident about how much of a stick you need to apply. The AAD website recommends four swipes, but I'm not really sure how they came up with that number. I think sticks are really useful though. They usually have waxy ingredients that tend to stay put on skin a bit better than a lot of lotions. So if you have a great sunscreen that burns your eyes, try using a stick around your eyes and putting the stinging sunscreen on the rest of your face. You can also layer a translucent powder on top to try to keep it in place even more. The Neutrogena Sheer Zinc Stick is another great option for this. I think if you get a lot of eye sting, a zinc stick is probably your safest option. On top of the benefits of having a stick, you also avoid chemical sunscreens. Some of those can cause a lot of stinging, although I also know some people who only get stinging with mineral sunscreens. Like I said, eye sting is just all over the place. Ultraviolet Supreme Screen is an Australian sunscreen that's their all-rounder product meant for all skin types. It's hydrating, so it doubles up as a moisturizer, but has a satin finish and works well as a primer under makeup. It has what they describe as a clean sort of scent. 
And it has a bunch of antioxidants in it as well. And it has my favorite type of sunscreen packaging, a pump top. They're just so handy and it makes it easy to remember how much you need to use. I really love that ultraviolet sunscreens were developed by women who have a lot of experience making products for a multi-step routine. So their sunscreens tend to work well for morning routines where the sunscreen might need to be layered with other skincare and makeup products. Some brands don't really seem to take that into account and you end up looking like your skin is kind of falling off, which is not the nicest look, but the whole ultraviolet line was purposely designed to play well with other products, so I think that's why they've gotten so popular. As well as Australia, you can get ultraviolet in a whole bunch of UK retailers. They have a few other really popular sunscreens too, like the Queen Scream, which is for dry skin. The Cancer Council Face Day Wear Fluid is another new entry on my list. It's another Western lightweight fluid sunscreen launched late 2021. I think they might have been inspired by the La Roche-Posay Fluid. It's a bit more affordable though, so it hurts less if someone decides to empty half the bottle on their back. It comes in a handy pump, which also makes it more likely that you'll catch them before that happens. It's recommended for combo and oily skin, absorbs quickly, dries smoothly on skin, and has a few mattifying ingredients. In terms of eye sting, people have said that it stings less than some of the other Cancer Council sunscreens like the Face Day Wear Matte, but it can still sting, so be warned. I think my favourite thing about it is that it funds the Cancer Council, who do a lot of cancer research and provide cancer-related services. Mecca recently-ish reformulated their To Say Face sunscreen. Look, the last few years old, just one big blur, I think it was late 2020. The old version was super popular in Australia, so this is the new version. It's been designed to copy the original. All the inactive ingredients are the same. But it does have slightly different filters. They got rid of oxybenzone, which isn't that bad an ingredient really, but it's the sunscreen active that gets all the blame. It's like the Jar Jar Binks of sunscreen ingredients. And it's actually quite rare to see oxybenzone in Australian sunscreens, so I'm guessing that's why they changed it. So they took oxybenzone out and added bimotrizinol, also called Tinosorb S, which is a newer photostable filter that's mostly used to boost UVA protection. It's one of my favorite sunscreen ingredients. Mecca is a beauty store in Australia, a lot like Sephora, so their sunscreen was purposely designed with makeup wearers in mind. It's lightweight and non-greasy and sits under foundation really nicely. It has a pretty matte finish and has some moisturizing ingredients and antioxidants like sodium PCA, vitamin E, and pycnogenol. It has a moderately strong floral scent and a few people on the Mecca website have said that it stings their eyes, so watch out for that. One really good thing about this is that there's a mini 30 gram version as well as this 75 gram one, so you can test it out thoroughly. If you're in Australia, you can also just go into the store and try it on. Ultraceuticals Mattifying Daily Moisturizer is the daily sunscreen that I've been recommending for the longest. It's a mattifying sunscreen that absorbs quickly. There are silica microspheres in it that absorb excess skin oil and diffuse light to give a matte look which is why it's recommended for oily skin. But it also has a lot of moisturizing ingredients in it, like my favorite glycerin, as well as shea butter, hyaluronic acid, panthenol, and niacinamide, to give a boost of moisture to your skin. It doesn't clog pores, it sinks into skin quickly, and there's no whiteness. It comes in a handy pump tube. Over the last five-ish years I've been recommending this sunscreen, a lot of people have asked me about the relatively low SPF 30. I think SPF 30 is fine for everyday use if you're not getting a lot of sun, especially if you can apply a lot of it comfortably since SPF depends on the amount. The biggest sunscreen study that discovered a lot of the anti-aging and anti-cancer benefits of daily sunscreen was done using SPF 16 in the sunniest part of Australia. Their kangaroo pouches actually have aircon now. But it does feel a bit low since everything else on the market is usually at least SPF 50 now. So I was pretty happy to see that there's now an SPF 50 version and it looks like it has similar ingredients. The reviews I've seen are very promising. There is also a hydrating version for drier skin. Ultraceuticals products are on the expensive end, but I don't mind as much because they're a smaller brand and they do a lot of clinical testing and original research. For example, they published this paper, which is one of the most heavily cited and ripped off papers about vitamin C. If you see a table about vitamin C derivatives, they probably got it off this. So the money is going to something better than, I don't know, paying a celebrity to endorse it. This is a special use sunscreen I wanted to mention, the Naked Sunday's Hydrating Glow Mist. This is what I recommend for a quick sunscreen top up over your makeup. 
This is a pump spray rather than an aerosol spray. I've talked before about why I don't like aerosols and it has pretty detailed instructions on how to apply it, which I really like. I have seen some people say that their spray packaging started leaking after they had it in their bag for a bit, but that hasn't happened to mine. This is non-sticky, non-greasy, has a bunch of hydrating ingredients in it and says it doesn't need to be rubbed in. A spray wouldn't be my top choice for reapplication if you're getting a lot of sun. I'd recommend a proper reapplication of a regular lotion product. You can check out my sunscreen questions video for more about that. Now let's have a moment of silence for the sunscreens that have exited my recommendations since last year. Anessa Perfect UV Milk, the 2020 version was on my list, but I haven't tried the newest 2022 version, which has a blue label and currently is even more expensive than the 2020 version. The old one was a bit heavy in texture for an Asian sunscreen, but it worked really nicely under makeup with no pilling despite being water resistant. People have said that the new version is a bit heavier and shinier. I can also confirm that the Can Make Mermaid Gel was reformulated in 2020. I think there were still some tubes of the old version floating around when I did my last video, but the new version apparently has more of a white cast and it's a bit more drying. As Clay Action Day Moisturizer also got reformulated and I haven't tried the new version yet, but I've heard it's quite different. Now for some honorable mentions. Isn't Tree Watery Sun Gel is what I recommend if you have drier skin and you found that Asian sunscreens aren't necessarily moisturizing enough. This has a heavier texture and is designed for dry and sensitive skin. It's been clinically tested to not irritate skin. There's no white cast, no fragrance, and no alcohol. This hits on a lot of the same points as the Airy Sunstick, manufactured by Colmar, approved in Korea, brightening and anti-wrinkle functional cosmetic with niacinamide and adenosine, multi-layered hydration from eight types of hyaluronic acid. The SPF and PA ratings have also been independently tested. Isntree recommends this for outdoor activities, but there's no official water resistance rating, so I probably wouldn't recommend it for hardcore exercise or like doing push-ups while eating laksa, but it might be a bit more durable than other Korean sunscreens. It's also recommended for application over makeup. I think a lot of lightweight sunscreens are really good for this. I have a video on how to do that if you want to check that out. Also note that they introduced new packaging for this, which is why it looks a bit different from the tube you saw in my previous reviews. Cancer Council Face Daywear Matte Moisturizer. Cancer Council Face Daywear Matte has a lightweight, easy to apply texture. It's moisturizing, gives a matte finish on skin, and it's fragrance free. This is the invisible version, it's really popular. It won an award from the website Beauty Heaven. It's quite affordable at $15 for 75 grams. Here is the filter combo. I'm quite surprised that it uses Avo Benzone as the only UVA filter since we do have newer ones available here. But the fluid which has BMT and MBBT was only launched last year, so maybe they're rolling them out gradually. It seems to be a similar formula to the Audi Ombra Daily Defense and the Natio Daily Defense. They all have the same filters at the same percentages as well as the same inactive ingredients. On the topic of this sunscreen, I wanted to also shout out the Face Daywear BB Cream Matte in the light tint, which I love. This is technically a cosmetic sunscreen in Australia rather than a proper therapeutic sunscreen, so it isn't regulated as strictly, but sunscreens are cosmetics in a lot of other countries. This seems to be a very similar formula to the matte moisturizer based on the ingredients list, but it's tinted. And it's lightly tinted enough that you can apply a full sunscreen sized amount, but still look normal. And this actually makes my skin look so nice and still so natural, but it stings my eyes. I think it's the sunscreen actors combo. I actually liked it so much that I kept trying it for a full week. I was in so much denial, but I've also seen lots of reviews of this where people didn't have this issue. So I think there's some luck involved. So this is perfect for the sunscreen stick trick. Just for Australians, or if you're visiting Australia, I recommend trying the Woolworths, Coles, and Audi $2.20 sunscreens. They're ridiculously cheap, and they're much more lightweight than a lot of more expensive sunscreens I've tried. They leave a shiny, sticky finish, but you can powder over that to get rid of it, and they're also four hours water resistant. And if you don't like them on your face, then you can use them on your body. They're super comfortable there too. Some councils actually give out free tubes of these in the public kangaroos. I also wanted to mention Evi. Evi are a Swedish brand sold in the EU, and they use a technology that gets the sunscreen to lock into the top layers of skin, so it doesn't rub off as easily. It's very cool. I've talked about the data backing up their long wear claims before. Now for my US viewers. You always ask me for recommendations that you can actually buy in your stores, but 
Your country hasn't approved a lot of the newer sunscreen ingredients that are basically standard in Australia, and these ingredients make it a lot easier to formulate high protection sunscreens that are still really lightweight and comfortable to wear. But you do have a few that I'd recommend. Bondi Sands Fragrance Free Lotion was developed and approved in Australia, so it meets our highest standard for broad spectrum, which is the same as the one in the EU. The US has a lower standard, so a lot of sunscreens that count as broad spectrum in the US don't count as broad spectrum here. This is a fast absorbing sunscreen and it's four hours water resistant. You can get it in the UK as well, and it had a big moment on social media where everyone was raving about it, and that sort of highlighted to me how lucky we are in Australia to have so many good brands working on great sunscreens. From the ingredients list, the face and body versions look like they might be the same formula. Elta MD UV Clear is a new entry on my list. It's probably the most popular Elta MD sunscreen. Elta MD is a brand that's sold in a lot of skin clinics. It's very lightweight and silky, it's meant to be good for sensitive skin, including skin prone to acne and rosacea, and it applies clear with no residue. I'm not entirely sure it would meet the broad spectrum requirements for Australia or the EU with its filters, but it is broad spectrum in the US, and it's very wearable, so if you're not getting a lot of sun, this is a pretty good option. Mineral sunscreens that use titanium dioxide or zinc oxide as the sunscreen ingredients usually have white cast and a thick paste-like texture that sticks to my fringe, especially when you get to higher SPF, which I really don't like. They also often clog my pores. I have a whole video where I just complain about zinc oxide because, I don't know, I woke up one day and decided to piss off half the beauty brands that might potentially sponsor me. I'm not that smart, I just play a smart person on YouTube. Anyway, some people prefer using mineral sunscreens, maybe they don't have access to the newer chemical filters that are recommended for sensitive skin, some people actually like the white cast or the slightly drying effect. So here are my recommendations. Ultraviolet Lean Screen and Naked Sunday's Collagen Glow, both are SPF 50 plus here, which means over SPF 60, and Paula's Choice Super Light Daily Wrinkle Defense, which is SPF 30. All of these are fragrance free and have a tint to help hide that white cast. They still aren't entirely invisible on darker skin though. For very dark skin, you're going to need a chemical or a combo sunscreen if you want high protection without the white cast. I don't think there's a high SPF mineral sunscreen on the market that's completely invisible yet. All the links are in the description, comment with other sunscreens for me to try, like and subscribe, follow me, more sunscreen videos are popping up around me if you want more.